Can you guys hear me on a, let's see, uh, on the far side? Okay, so can the remote side hear me? Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, let's do it. So, moving right along. Uh, where are we? So, pretty close to actually being ready to put the walls up next couple of days. So, what we have right now is we've begun uh, wrapping the house modules with house wrap plus the exterior siding, finishing details. So we want to focus on the exterior module so we can basically build them up on a sill plate and, and wrap the house up. We do need, like once we start doing that, in order not to leave the interior of the house exposed, what we want to do is have everything ready from the walls to the, uh, to the ceiling and roof joists and edge joists so that when we put the walls up, they're not just sitting there. We're going to put the roof on so that they're protected from water from the inside because all the insulation is exposed and everything else so um, I'm looking at the digital model on a front page and that's looking pretty good so if you download the latest we're at the stage where uh, pending addition of roof structure which we can do maybe we can do that today yeah I, I mean a lot of that mm-hmm Pending that, this is ready for a structural engineer to actually take a look at it. Uh, so, building package ready for detail and structural analysis, structural uh, proofing by a structural engineer. Uh, given that we're not just using standard by the book construction with tilt up walls, we're doing modular systems here. That will be a step. For the first time, and I have no idea how it looks like down the road, but I think once we get the first stamp, then we give that detail to the next building department, and we probably will not need a structural engineer after the first house. It's just that somebody has to look this over uh, so that the building department uh, is confident that, okay, yeah, we've got everything. <coughs> Should not be an issue, we're over building. We're following codes in the design, so we're good. So from this kind of digital model now can stem detail. Like if you look at if an architect actually looks at this, looks at, okay, here's our walls. We, it's known that we have insulation. Now let's see. So let me share my screen here. So if you look at this this picture here, when an architect looks at that, they can say, ooh, okay, it's a complete model, pretty much. We don't have the windows or doors, um, just kind of like pretty much placeholders. Uh, in those door and window placeholders, there's standard techniques that we're following throughout, so there's not really any issues there. But an architect can take a look at this and, and start talking about, okay, I'll, I'll uh, draw up all the details for the building department. I'm not sure how much, the, how much detail the building department does need. They, they do want to see, okay, how are you doing your, uh, just, okay, how do, how do the, does the sill so plate go on a foundation, like little details. How do you join one, one part to the next? They can actually extract this from this model because it's there. Now it's there. We've got the main structure, structural members. I guess the thing that's missing is we didn't include details like, oh, here's the screw schedule. We didn't put screws into this yet or, or nail schedule, but that's something that you annotate the, the drawings with and say, okay, here's our screw schedules. That, those are some of the outstanding details that would go into the build package uh, that an architect to do. So we'll see if uh, 
the collaboration with Bidema Architects can yield that. Uh, Bob Berkebeil is coming over today at 5. We'll see what he says. Uh, he's apparently quite interested in helping this out. The common interest throughout Kansas City is affordable housing. Um, Luke, who you met last time, he's talking about snapping up a city block and having us build. Great, I see that parallel between a block and a city and a thousand acres outside. So we can kind of have like sister communities where we're actually implementing the rural urban connection and practice through a model like that. Um, in a in a rural area, you can be talking about natural resources like earth, wood, food, rock for concrete, solar concrete. Uh, I, I want to see the same thing. If we snap up a block, you can do a lot of that. You can do aquaponics. Uh, so the current plan right now is if this we got to build a first house first and we'll see if september still works out we're working on it um seems like with uh if a person like bob berkebeil is on our side it's you know through the codes it's typically like two weeks to get through codes they'll probably be automatic if we have collaboration with people inside the city so that looks pretty good but inside the city i'd like to see i mean we got to go all the way it's like regenerative open source development, regenerative open source housing construction set. It's um, kind of how I would think about it. So absolutely renewable energy, nickel iron batteries for storage. If you want to go take a take a block off grid right now, if you have a have a nickel iron battery system, even if you're importing from China, pay by, payback time on that is I was looking at it. It's like three years for the batteries if you're doing electric if you're doing electric heating like heat pumps and electric things so that your utility bills go 100 percent solar uh, that's a that's a possibility uh, and of course i'd like to push the limits on closed loop water systems aquaponics and digesters worm towers uh, duckweed gutters fish worm towers plant towers an integrated system that gets you to closed loop water systems, which is of high interest for civilian, military, and lunar and Mars scenarios. Triple use. Um, but how do you, that's going to be like no no city in their right mind is going to accept that. So there's a simple way around it. Hey, the end pipe goes down the sewer. Once we're ready, we just turn it off. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I mean, you can do that. that. That would be one strategy for uh, negotiating cities. They're going to tell you, like, are you out of your mind? Because yeah. nobody's done it. And then we can say, no, nah, it's it's all doable. Here's the numbers. We, you can look at a lot of the calculations. Here's uh, actually on the wiki. I've got, like, worm tower calculations, biodigester calculations, duckweed, aquaponics, growing towers. All the numbers add up. Ozonator design. Uh, ozonator would be a... Uh, part of that system so very exciting and you know so we're seeing this digital model come into life uh, I was looking at I was actually looking at map of Kansas City you go Kansas City Kansas there's like whole blocks with like three three houses on a block it's pretty insane it's like what's going on there is it just undesirable places or yeah um, nobody's buying <laughs> houses over there yeah it's bad apparently bad neighborhoods or they used to be now yeah pretty much abandoned yeah yeah there's a bunch of blight you can buy houses uh from the land bank for around like ten thousand dollars that are kind of broken down kansas especially, city especially in southern kansas city you know i was talking to them earlier about dayton where i'm from dayton ohio they the city tore down a bunch of houses so they're it's the same situation a bunch of blocks with just a few houses and i think that's what happened in kck hmm very interesting yeah and yeah there might be bad neighborhoods but uh, when I came to America back in 1982 that was like Newark <laughs> Newark New Jersey yeah it's <laughs> not as bad as that <laughs> so uh, uh, no this is this is very benign compared to like bad scene on the East Coast or something like that yeah it's not it's not bad by comparison uh, but you have to negotiate you have to know how to negotiate with a city, with a community, and the plan has to be uh, transcendent. It has to be like 
we're we're not just coming in. This is like it's a long term investment, and you're investing and in then in education and in infrastructure. I think at a block scale that allows you to think about regenerative in infrastructures being built in as opposed to a single house where that might be a little hard to think about that. Luke's idea is actually a uh, hundred dollar per month rent for transitional housing. So build a Sidika home with like six rooms on top, which uh, according to him, the economic model works out if you're charging like a hundred bucks a week for rent and actually competing with motels, which costs like more than that. So you mean, per week or a month? Hundred per week. So I, here it's like two hundred per week for a hotel, motel. But a thing that we can transition that so that could be student housing, could be low cost housing, maybe transitional, relevant to students, say going through college. But then we have to think about okay, what's the transition from that to you know family housing? Could be done. Uh, we were talking about this style because because actually Luke uh, looks quite familiar with that scene he's uh, been there so it's very interesting on Luke's side that he pretty much rose up like I mean he's a very powerful entrepreneur right now but he kinda uh, was in a bad situation before so he understands like the, the homeless part the the housing needs there so from his personal experience he's saying okay we need this kind of transitional housing for people to get on their feet don't have to worry about bills where it's really like you just save enough money even if you work at McDonald's you know, let's say but you still have enough resource to then get an education and so forth so it's interesting interesting stories but definitely the the price the <laughs> Luke says uh, it's an interesting conversation only thing we can control is price actually so that's a that's a way to work on this system we can't control the customer can't control like the city whether somebody's going to buy the house or whatever, you can only control the product and its price. Uh, I, would, I think it's a useful way to think about it. So, uh, it's good. It's, uh, you know, all kinds of opportunities are opening up. Getting back to the actual design, so let's see what, what happens with um, this is, yeah, penning the roof and what's, what's, what needs to happen on the roof. Like right now from the current model, I see the inner walls are largely done at least on the second floor to, to build the the focus is get it all wrapped up and then we can worry about the inside so do the outside and that's also important for the structural engineer for structural the engineer does not look at the does not need to look at the interior walls because they're not load bearing only one that is load bearing is the one under the stairway which is supporting the stairway hole those shorter joists there if you um, maybe take a look at my screen here. What is what is structural on the inside? Not a lot, just these three walls. So let's take a look at them. So those are the three walls that we would have to put into the model to to get it to the next phase. Okay, we're actually going through building codes. Um, let's see, is my free cat gonna boot up? So uh, we can take a look at under SH2 CAD. Uh, I can take a look at the second story platform, which is uh, let's talk about that because uh, maybe we can divide that. Since like looking at the model, I mean we're good enough on a as far as I can see. I'm not sure if like some of the modules need to be reworked. I know we have to rework the the CAD. So the doors and windows because we found it so hard to do those headers the way we're doing it and they're flimsy they don't stick to stand together uh, we want to just redo that long the long stud on the sides of the windows and doors that's just one thing but after that it's the second story platform the structure there we talked about how we pre-build the edge joists with the blocking to locate all your joists so we're not guessing where it is it's so when we get up there one after another goes right up we have to do the same for the roof, uh, meaning pre-build, uh, pre-screw the, the spacers like we did before just to locate, um, yeah, locate all the joists. So we can do a repeat of what we did there in a the workshop. 
Um, okay, with a second story platform, second story floor, this one. Let's take a look at that. So open up FreeCAD and open up the second story floor platform. So in the house model, the the wall underneath. So this 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 header here. Um, Let's see. So this, the wall that's under there, meaning the interior wall around the stairs, those three pieces, four feet, four feet, and a partial piece there, uh, those are the only ones that have to be built to the model for the structural engineer to, to assess this. So those three modules there. And here, I mean, we, we did this, we did uh, the four, so this, this joist here, this one, that one, that one, we did those in terms of putting the blocking on. The procedure is you put the locating blocking on the long edge joists and then fit your regular joists to them according to the detail. So does that make sense? We we did that. We have to do the same for the the roof, where the roof is easier because we don't have the cutout on the roof. There is no nothing, no secret latch we need to do for the roof, unless we'd actually be doing three story, which we're not. In a three story, we'd actually want to preframe that, so we're not cutting that out uh, later on. But we're not doing three stories. That's not right now. Um, now, can somebody describe what was the purpose? So if you think about it, this sits on the walls, right? You can picture the walls underneath and we can perhaps open up the full model. Um, let's open up the full model. How, so can somebody describe how do the walls, the how does the second story platform sit on the walls? How do we describe that? Um, they have um, the rim joists and then they have uh, blocking mm -hmm. and then there's one piece of blocking um, per, main, per main joist attached to the rim joists and then one that's attached on the actual jo joist itself. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So in a and what is the spacing that that blocking we selected? It's uh, 24 inches. That's for uh, the joist. Off, off to the side. Um, so like each each we assume each uh, joist is 1.5 inches because it's just a, um, uh, the depth of a two by six, and then um, mm -hmm. and then so it's you measure 24 inches on each, and then 7.75 inches away from that is. Uh, where you put the edge of the blocking to either direction. Uh, 7.5 inches. 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. Right. Um, and let's take a look at, so here's the detail. So here's the, the top plate is actually missing. You can see that that hole there that we need to put the top plate on there. Uh, so we can maybe divide those rolls. Top plate is relatively simple. Well, However, the module, is there additional plate yes, on top of yes, there is. You have to bond the tops of the modules together. Mm -hmm. um, so that space is missing. <coughs> now, you see that space is a little bigger than 1.5, right? You can, you can kind of see it. What else goes in there? Insulation. No. Still gasket. No. It's the subfloor. The the plywood so it's three quarters plus one point five. The subfloor, we're gonna put that on the entire second story platform, all the way to the edge, sixteen by thirty-two. 
therefore the top walls are going to sit on that. That makes sense. So you have a flat surface on the whole first floor. All your second story walls sit in there. So the, there's a there's the top plate, and then there's the oh the it's the plywood three quarter inch plywood flooring. Um, so for the the top plate though, you want to you gotta stagger it though. You don't want to put a 16 and a 16 together. You want to stagger it so that you're ending up like halfway. In other words, like maybe 14 and 20, but we don't have 20s, we have 16, so basically you got a stagger. There's a stagger there. Uh, we should write this down. Um, so, <clears throat> Let's duplicate this so we make sure we follow these points. These are just final like CAD finishing here. So let's do this uh, as uh, second story platform detail. So top plate we can do 16 on the short sides right can we do it what do we do on the short the, sides what about the corners like do we want to bond the corners because the short side modules are already oh no the short side corners we should lock into uh, the club this yeah, we want the bottom to the shape corner. Yeah, we want the top plate uh, to overlap what the corner to go. Yes, yeah. you want that. How do we do that? Uh, look at the wall module diagram and do the complement of whatever the wall modules are. Like if the short sides overlap the long sides, then the top plate of the long sides should overlap the, the short side. Okay, so tell me. Well, which is overlapping which at, at the second story floor and why? Uh, the, long corner, the long sides overlap the short sides. Yeah. And why is that? Why do we want that? Instead of the other way around? Yeah. I, I don't know. Because they're load bearing, so you want to keep everything on the long side. Uh, keep the long side uniform, like a solid long thing. So that little edge at the end, you don't want to be resting on the end walls. Um, you could, but we don't. We The rationale there is all the weight, like the weight load bearing is on the long edge. So that's kind of how we decided. It also makes it such, I guess there's no, I guess it could be the other way around too because there is no compelling reason why the short side could not start bearing weight I guess but I think the other reason there is when we do the top plate with a 16 footer you can bond the short edge to the long edge when the long edge is overlapping does that make sense in other words the 16 spans both the short and long side so it bonds them all together I think that's probably the main reason there also, foundation, I think the short sides overlap the long, the sill plate, the short side sill plate overlaps the long side sill plate, and so if that matters, the wall modules on top are doing the complement of that, so maybe that's stronger than, than otherwise. Yeah, on the bottom we wanted to bond the sill plates together, and then... Which it does. Yeah, yeah, we're com <laughs> yeah I guess we're doing the complement of exact same thing right as on a sill plate yeah so that same over overlap as the sill plate true so top plate uh, short side use a 16 footer overlaps the long side uh, wall panels and then now that turns out that there is not going to be two 16s, they're going to be slightly shorter on the long side because we're cutting out that 
Oh, now this is actually two point um, two by sixes for the top plate. So use two by six for top plate. Therefore, the the long side altogether it's minus eleven inches than thirty two feet because uh, we're cutting off five and a half on each side. Uh, but the critical thing is don't overlap at a joint. Take uh, I guess what do we do? We got uh, if we got 16s, we should have like 12, maybe. Oh, I, I'm not sure what we ha we have, but we just want to make sure that if we have 16s, that we don't just maybe cut it at a place that's midway between the two modules, so uh, you're not overlapping the at the the joint. Uh, so long side, cut the top plate so it doesn't overlap the, sh the, the joint. That's, that's the critical thing. And then, um, so then we put on, put on the second story platform. And so what are the outer dimensions of the second story platform? What size are we talking about now? You mean the plywood subfloor? Yeah, or the actual framing of the Grim joists. joists. Like what, what size exactly to the outside dimensions of that thing? Yeah, 16 by 32, same as the foundation, except not really, because the foundation's got the outside two edges with insulation. So the foundation is actually a little two inches shorter on each side. But the second story platform is 16 by 32, and so is the roof. Like, everything is going up straight vertically. Now, note that 16 by 32 is not to the outer plywood. It's to the framing. That's just the only detail you got to... When we put the modules onto the sill plate... It's not the plywood that goes over the. It can't because it's got that one one inch drip part. That means it goes outside uh, what we have for the base for the the sill plate. Um, right, and on a sill plate, the sill plate. Remember, it's two by four, and we're putting the the bottom plate of the modules on that. So you you're once you put the bottom modules on there on the outside edge of the insulation so uh, you can think about that uh, so 16 by so it's nice and regular like we got to at this point we got to keep the house square so that like the main consideration is okay how do you keep it all square so when we lay the, the wall modules up I mean the corners are measured to be pretty exact to like within a quarter inch or something like that so if we lay them and we end up at the very end of the corners, we are at the right length. We, and then we push in, uh, make sure that you know at the top we measure it and we make sure it's it's 16 by 30. It ends up at that as well. Remember we have one adjustment module, so like we'll shrink that if we're over. We're not going to be likely to be under because all the modules are four feet, so we're likely not to be under unless they shrunk, but I don't think they do. Uh, they can be a little expanded because you've got some maybe misadjustments or warping or maybe just a little larger. This, you got the sill gasket that adds up over a number of sill gaskets. So like uh, eight sill gaskets thicknesses that you're squeezing together, it might add up to like you know half an inch or an inch or something. Um, okay. On the second story plat platform, the blocking that we used was how long? Because, and what was the consideration for the blocking? We're going to have an interior wall that goes straight up to the top. So, uh, discussing the, so let's go open up another. Um, stairs. Okay, so this. Can anyone describe the consideration for how deep the blocking was that we added to the joists? What was the consideration there? 
people who did it. I guess most of us did it here, I guess. But what was the consideration for the depth of that blocking? There was a reason for how deep it was. It could be like, you know, it's blocking enough so that you can put the wood against it. Yes, that's one consideration. But how far should it stick out? Should it be one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches? Or how long? Can anyone picture that? It's in the, the details here. We, so the detail. So this was um, the blocking detail, first floor ceiling detail. So download that that one. Okay, so that's a detail. And so now, based on this detail, can you tell me why the blocking was a certain? So that's the plywood. See what's going on there? What's happening there? This is this thing that's, we're gonna put insulation in there. And then we're gonna close it off. So can somebody describe how deep this blocking is that we put in there? In words. Three point five inches. Three point five, and how do you get that, Justin? Why would it be three point five inches? <laughs> Upgrade now. <laughs> we're we're getting. Yeah, let's rejoin. I'm going to buy this thing. I thought it didn't have this. I, okay, let's just rejoin the Zoom because we got knocked out. Okay, so what's the rationale there? 5.5 um, minus 1.5 minus 3 quarters for the plywood width. Plywood. Is the plywood inside that or outside that? I would assume it's inside. Uh, why would it be inside? What's the reason? You want it flat with the wall. So the interior is on the outside. So you want to go straight up with it so it's smooth. You don't have a jump there. So it would be outside. Outside there. So it's the plus. Uh, well, okay, let me, let me just... Let's join the zoom again here. Is that the same location we did uh, this last time? Same meeting location? Yeah. The, the link on the front page of the doc, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what would it be? So it's, that gap cavity there is 5.5, right? It's, and then we have the joist, which is 1.5 on the outside. So that blocking would have to be four in order to be equal with the interior walls so that we can put another piece of siding, the interior siding there to make it even with the rest of the wall and it's clean. And I will put trim around it so it's a nice, it looks really nice. Uh, but the answer there is four. Now what happens, just dis discussing what's the similarity to the roof. The roof is almost identical. Do we have such at the roof? Um, what's going on at the roof? The roof is different and it has a ceiling, so we already close it off. So we don't have to worry about what's going on in that blocking in there. So that blocking can be any distance. It could be like, let's make it like three inches or, I mean, four inches is what we used before. We can use four inches or three inches. It doesn't matter because we're not putting, putting blocking in there. Uh, we're going to put a ceiling. So like here you have a ceiling, so you have the joist, you attach it from the bottom to to the joists at the roof. 
The point is that the blocking on the, on the roof, we want to, what do we want to do? We still want to locate it so it's fast to put up. Um, but we don't even need that second blocking because the second blocking that was attached to the joist what was the purpose of that? That was so we can close it off. Um, the panel closure. The so here. Th this block. We call it blocking. Call it face blocking. We don't have this because now on the on the roof what's happening we're gonna put a ceiling and the ceilings gonna look like this okay So here in our detail here, um, where's the ceiling go? It's at literally attached to the to these here. So if we go to part design, let's draw a ceiling panel. Here, this surface put a panel on that here so our ceiling panels these are our four by eight panels that go all the way like this let's make that transparent and white it's going to be the white panels so that's what's happening at the roof there's your ceiling in other words, like all this blocking there, so all this stuff, you don't need it. You don't need these. Uh, well, you need the, they're connected here. Uh, these were the locating blockings. We do need these. Okay, so we do need these. We need to locate the joists, roof joists. We do not need the stuff that was... we do not need this block here because that was there just so we have the blocking the, the face blocking on the on the f like the underside of the second floor so now we've got a ceiling that's going to be the ceiling on the on the second floor so what are the tasks for a technically correct model on a on a on a roof what we want to do is this entire assembly um and then the detail on the roof is it's slanted slightly it's going to be four inch slope the best way to do that um, so let's maybe divvy up the text since I'm seeing that the model is pretty much done let's uh, let's do a small exercise and so Wes you're doing the second no the, the actual roof I uploaded a file with it it doesn't have the panels and blocking on the joists um, but Mm -hmm. But it, the rest of it is the, the rest of it's complete. I think I'm just verifying it's the same as the second story, except for the 6.25 inch spacing. Yeah, I got that. Okay, so why don't you open up your file and share your screen and describe what you've done? Uh, this is what we want to build, which is just the the end the rim joists with the blocking. So according to Let's let's have Wes discuss it. Sure. Should we have all the panels in the completed house assembly? All the um, second uh, story platform and roof panels. <coughs> 
we want to, they are providing structure. Okay. So yeah. I know we don't we have do all want. the panels, I think, in the second story platform yet. Yeah, we should have them in there because that determines which ones you cut. Some of them we cut to six feet, some of them we cut to four feet because they're staggered. So a lot of them are going to be eight feet, but the ones on the ends, when you stagger them, you have to make the ones at the end four feet. So one row will be like complete eights, the other one will be like four, eight, 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 four, and so forth. So we need to, we need to know that pattern. Um, you disabled screen sharing. I did. For other participants. Yeah. Let's uh, try now. Yep. So I uploaded it to Wiki. It's called the Second Story Roof. It's like this. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to confirm that the length is right because I think I might have made it a little bit too short. So what is the exact outer dimensions? We said 16 by 32. So and that will be good. That's good because plus three equals one ninety two. And then not this is one I'm not sure. I this is one and two. Yeah. Sure. Uh two times sixteen. One ninety two is sixteen feet. So the other one should also be sixteen feet. Yeah, and so this so we should have exactly 16 by 32 outer outer dimension. And you see all the joists are in between the, the rim joists. Now this, um, this, this is posi positioned at um, zero. Mm -hmm. at zero, and this one is, uh, has the uh, x value of uh, 6.25. Well, but that sounds like it's a little too far out. Measure the this has to be such that it's above the wall, but a little bit of it is sticking out so that you can attach plywood to it. Um, so the dimension of interest is to the from the outside to the outside. That should be 6.25. So I think you got 1.5 too much. Um, measure from the outside on the left side to the outside on the right side. And that you should probably have like... Oh, so it's from the outside to outside, it's yeah. 6.25. That distance should be 6.5. What is it normally on the first floor? What do we have on the first floor? We had the thickness of the top plate for that, because it was sitting on the top plate. So what was that? 5.5. Here we're adding a 3 quarter inch. Why? Because we need something to attach the ceiling to. Otherwise we would have nothing to attach the ceiling to and we have to put a blocking there. So maybe we can divide this task up into, so that's good, that's great. Let's keep working on this. Is that you're in the XY plane, that's good, so that when we raise it up, we just have to raise it up to the roof in our location file. And then the roof is gonna be, uh, how do we find out where the roof is? So thinking about the roof, we already talked about where the second story floor is, right? We had that 121.125 thing. So we have that already. How far is the roof going to be above that? What do we have there? The height of the second story Panels? platform plus the multiple modules on the second story. Yes, so platform. I think that 121.125 was above the plywood on a second story platform. So I think we already were, because we were laying the walls, right? So now, right? Yeah, they're, they're floating in the drawing right now. 
yeah yeah uh, and that should be above the platform above the top plate above the subfloor the plywood on a second story it's called a subfloor it's a second story platform plywood so now you go up another eight foot panel and what else a top plate we still need a top plate on the sec second story walls to bond them together at the top and then we have this roof structure um, oh. so what is that it's eight feet but once again it's the three eighths under the eight feet plus 1.5 and that's where the roof is gonna this is gonna go so we can put it into the picture into the cat um, let's see um, is that so are the wall panels exactly a feet or are they slightly under Slightly under. We're using pre-cut studs as yes. standard. So that's like what? How much under is it? Three eighths. So it's ninety-five and five eighths. Ninety-five point six to five. And then the top plate is what height? One point five. Okay. Yep. So that's going to be the height of the lower edge. Now we discussed. So if um, we also discussed the roof slant <coughs> spacer. Um, so if you go to page fourteen and in today's working doc, let's remind ourselves of what the what the full structure was. Um, if I, let me share my screen. So if you look at this, we've seen before the structure of the roof. So we've got Wes just did the roof rafters. Are they called we, rafters? Yeah. What's or the difference between a rafter and a joist? Okay, Google it. I don't know. We tried to figure roof that rafter. out. Roof rafter. We tried to figure out if they if the roof was rafters or joists. Yeah, since we've got a flat roof, do they call that? Typically, rafters are called when you have it on a on a sloped roof. So maybe call it roof joists. Let's see what it says for roof joist. Uh, I don't know. If you release a balloon indoors, they will go to the rafters, but no one ever says the balloons float up to the joists. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I Google roof joist, it says a roofing joist is a horizontal member. So yes, we have that. That runs across an open space. That fits our definition. The roof may lie flat or be pitched. So let's call it roof joists roof joists yeah rafters would be more like in, a, in an arched in a thing like that the standard house shape okay so roof joists let's call it that Wes has got that the fiber insulation goes into that that's once we're building it on top of that we've got an insulation box to do the rigid insulation four inches four inches of that which go inside the insulation box actually so what well, that means is that we're going to trim off a little bit off the rigid insulation edge because the frame is on the inside. It, it constrains the, the insulation. It becomes 1.5 inches smaller because that's the outer insulation box frame is still 16 by 32. Everything we're doing is 16 by 32. Pretty much think about it that way. And then OSB goes on top of that. Uh, so. I don't know, let's divvy this up. Let's do one, one thing at a time. So let's not worry about the slant. Let's dis discuss the slant. So in order to keep this all simple, not cutting any joists up to an angle, we're going to keep everything a box, and we're just going to raise one side of it four inches. It's one way to do it. It's an easy way to do it. And then you, you'll hardly, you won't even notice that it's like the front. You won't notice that it's slanted even. So it's good. But, but let's, 
yes. but a 16 foot joist, if you put it at an angle, is will be shorter. It won't span the whole. Yeah, thing. should we make them longer? Yeah, but that no, you you don't want to because if if you look at the detail of that, sure. uh, let me show show the. I think I did a little cat of that detail, but it's like it's minimal. It's like 0.1 inch or 0.2 inch or something like that. Something okay. very small. Because the angle is super low, it's almost a flat roof. So when you put it just like this one degree up, you can hardly see the length difference. That's that's the geometry of it. The Let me see if I. Are big enough that, isn't, that they still sit on top of the. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not going to be anywhere close to 1.5 inches. It's going to be like 0.2 or something, something like that. 0.1 sure. or 0.2. Let me see if I. No, I, I can't use my Math is Let's see if um, it's just hypotenuse of that thing. But I did do a since that's an important detail because you gotta know exactly where you're at. Otherwise, you're just guessing where you're at. So I did that. Let me see if I can pull that up under the details. Um, oh yeah, for example, south wall. Let's do. Um, let's see. Roof detail, south wall detail. I think it's under roof detail. That FCSTD. It's got that slight slant in there. So let's open up the roof detail. And what do we got there? Yeah, I mean that's how it ends up looking, so let's look at the model. So actually, yeah, there's details where this is like what, what we're going to be looking at it from the side like. In other words, we're going to have to close that gap there with trim, like there's trim there. Uh, the wall paneling is going to go all the way to the ceiling and end up once like a little bit above the floor, even though it's eight feet. So we're going to have to trim it down there. Uh, I, this is just actually a side view. I was just looking at it. How is it all going to look at the end of the day? So what we've seen already is, okay, here's our first floor. You got the utility channel. That's how it looks from the side. Here's the, actually the, oh, that's actually, now that I look at it, what should that be? The sill plate is not a 2 by 6 It's a 2 by 4 So this is the actual detail that's what we got at the bottom this is on a on a foundation so you got the sill plate here and the panel starts here and you trim this all up here so it's all good that's the utility channel you got the interior plywood and we use this it's called quarter round trim just do that so it looks neat um, if you go up that's your top plate that's your second story platform that's the OSB that's the actual panel on the first floor then you've got your second story wall and the detail up there that's this is what we're talking about that that riser that's a yeah that's the angle creator that's a two by four and a half inch plywood just put it on top uh, we should probably yeah so pre-cut these strips and and then maybe even just attach the yeah we might as well attach the block to it so we don't have to yeah you want to screw it in from the bottom so, so these two pieces here, we want to prepare that as a module. Uh, that's the riser. Now what's going to happen there is you're going to have this gap, but the interior plywood is going to be all the way up to the ceiling, so it closes it, and then trim, so it looks neat. Um, that's the details there. But the thing of interest is, uh, for the complete model, I guess for, for the structural, we want to show this, show this detail. Um, we can leave the box, let's keep leaving the box in the XY plane. Let's not tilt it yet until we have the details like all the blocking in there because then we're going to have to be tilting everything one by one. So let's just create everything in a flat plane. We'll put that all into one document and then we'll tilt it because otherwise you'd be tilting all the individual pieces. Uh, so keep working on an XY plane on this. So is there still, uh, is the only thing holding up the roof this angle 2x4 and the, its plate? 
Not exactly because there's exterior siding and that's what really is holding it together. So on the back of it, um, on the back of this thing, you're going to have the plywood. Okay, and you do see it does go up. And this is actually, I mean, maybe maybe that is a question. I'm not sure if... Um, don't really see a lot of issue with that that is bearing on that once you put the all the the plywood on the back surface the 5a 60 year plywood that bonds in tight and you also have uh, on the front you have hurricane ties at the front on the back we probably also want to do hurricane straps so straps that go from here to to the bottom panels you gotta protect for uplift so the standard is you do hurricane ties so we'll probably put the hurricane ties right here spanning from here to the bottom panel to the actual framing of the, the panel which ends here so that's what we need to do there um, see what else so the top plate is on this side here too you can see that's so that's your ceiling this this green here uh, so that's the side view and then so the exterior sheeting goes outside and it's so it's actually outside it's a little it makes the house larger than 16 by 32 by the thickness of the, the exterior plywood um, so a good exercise would be maybe um, Let's do a little exercise since we do a little bit of exercise every day. Let's take Wes's design and start adding blocking to it because we want to add block by block um, in the final model. Like say we do the basically the build detail or the instructionals, we can have like an exploded part animation where all the blocking goes into place in sequence. So something like that. Let's do that as an exercise where where we locate the blocking and um, start by working simply in the XY plane so it's easy to locate everything we're building up I would imagine we're starting at the 0 X 0 Y 0 plane so when we put in the blocking you just extrude it to the height of the uh, the joists which is 11.25 um, I'll start it and let's share a screen. So I'm going to download Wes's. Do that, <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so just going back to the roof thing, the reason that, that you don't fill that full space uh, of that kind of the thing that's creating the uh, the angle, the four inch kind of rise. Yeah. Why wouldn't you put a bigger piece in there? Because you'd have to then cut, kind of shave the the piece so that it, it itself is angled. Is that the logic? Or? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's. Uh, this is actually like a question for the structural engineer more, but I think, I mean, structurally, that is good if you are fixed. For example, if you're fixed here, my analysis of this is this. We're fixed at the front. We have hurricane straps connecting on every, every uh, joist to the structure here. You've got plywood at the front and back. There's no way that you can, well, it's very hard for it because you also have plywood on the side. You pretty much stabilize the entire roof. Here, it's only for compression strength. It's not for like lateral loads. This block is just compression. So based on that logic, a two by four block like that is fine because you've got largely compressive force except for that very very tiny fraction from one percent that's actually putting a force uh, actually to the right hand side if you like break down the force vector like it's going down straight along the back of this it's got a slight component to the right um, so I cannot tell you a, dip, uh, a number I can pull out that number by just looking at that uh, that force we can say oh it's probably like one percent or whatever 
and then you compare that to what this like if I'm doing first principle calculations like a struct structural engineer I don't know how they do it they probably uh, I don't know what they do I'm not so familiar but what I would do is analyze okay now we have the siding and you've got a certain screw schedule and you know that every screw or nail has X pounds of holding force and a general good figure is like 200 200 pounds per screw if you screw something in like the shear on that screw um, is about 200 pounds of force before you actually break it so you've got a load of screws like 200 pounds each times like a hundred or two hundred how many you've got all over the plywood so you've got like I'm doing back of the envelope I'm looking at like 200 times at least a hundred it's like 20,000 pounds are we ever get, getting 20,000 pounds pushing on this laterally hell no so my basic back of the envelope tells me okay that block is there now we'll wait for what the engineer says maybe maybe that's wrong maybe they don't like it um, so we can do that and how do I get 200 so that's this is like basic numeracy of dimension like the PSI of steel 50,000 PSI we, we did that before like I think I, I mentioned one time yeah. numeracy on how do you know like first principle back of the envelope what's gonna hold what you can get about 200 pounds because uh, screw it's like an eighth inch it's like uh, such and such fractions about a hundredth of a square inch so I, I look in my mind I, I take 50,000 PSI which typically compressive and shear strengths are the same so I'm taking 50,000 divided by 100 which is how much meat we have in a screw it's about an eighth inch square so I divide 50,000 by 100 it's actually 64 but close to 100 I get 500 pounds so so that figure of 200 which is close yeah that's like a safety factor of two over just a plain 50,000 psi strength of steel and the screws are probably more than 50,000 psi because they're hard steel so um, that's the idea there um, back of the envelope stuff tells me yes that's gonna be fine not a problem what's the compressive strength of wood it's 700 psi you're not gonna squeeze that by putting a roof on that even if you've got like a foot of snow or two feet of snow that's not going anywhere um, but this is the kind of stuff like I'm not sure we've never done this like we never got stuff through codes but we'll uh, we'll get that in the next week or two see if the engineer uh, disputes any of this logic and if that's the case then we might put in a, seri uh, a solid block there or something if they wanted but I don't see a reason for it Yeah, psychologically, it's uh, it's just scary to look at that a little bit, <laughs> but it makes sense what you're saying. Psychologically, it looks scary. I agree with you. In this drawing, in this side view, but you have to consider also that it is a side view and it's missing the the sheeting. Right. Or the sheeting is what stabilizes for racking. So compressive wise, right. you can say racking. Yeah. R racking meaning like it bends from a a square to a parallelogram like under loads it kind of sh racks mm -hmm. um, the thing that's this misleads on is the fact that this does not show the the sheathing which is what's responsible for all the racking forces so yeah this looks I, I would agree this looks kind of scary from this view but it's also misleading as far as because it's not showing the truth because when you'll see the box of the house covered you won't see that that's inside and you'll be quite comfortable because you see that it's oh the house is just a solid house that's how it's going to look from the outside and um, even though the outer plywood is like five eighths of an inch over a hundred feet that adds up so it's like uh, so say it's like only five eighths inch for the exterior plywood that's a hundred feet of it well how thick does it become if you compress it over one foot 
So think about a piece of 100 inches of thickness of wood holding that roof. You know, just like hand waving, order of magnitude considerations. Well, if you had a, like a, a two by, like a, whatever, two by 100, yeah, that would hold it, of course, like, so I don't know, that's, that's just kind of think, like you have to think that, oh yeah, all this plywood, even though it's thin, over 100 feet, it adds up to a lot of strength. You can put a lot of screws around that 100 feet. At six inches, you would have 200 screws. So it's 200 times 200 pounds of shear per, so you got 40,000 pounds of resistance just from the screws. Uh, not to mention the hurricane ties where each, I'm not sure what each one is rated for, but the hurricane ties, each one of those has to have a few hundred pounds. So so it's it's okay at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so the, but the things that are actually tying that roof down right now, that will be the, the hurricane straps, the metal pieces that go on, that are attached to every roof joist, and the sheathing on the sides where the sheathing on the sides that's going to be perhaps the most significant because it's continuous around the whole structure hurricane ties are only strips every two feet but they're steel so they're like 10 or 100 times stronger they're like 100 times stronger than than the wood so the steel does a lot so let's do a little exercise on uh, on what let's let's locate the blocking and then because that's um right now we've got blocking and second story platform which um it's not super critical for the structural guy um but just to complete the model i think that is useful to do uh, there's let's let's do this exercise because it's, it's useful just to hone our freecad skills so that we're like flowing with freecad so let's do that i'll download latest file. Any other questions on the design considerations here? This is the, the finite element analysis module. I haven't used it. In FreeCAD, yeah. yeah. I, haven't, I haven't used it myself. But, um, yeah, that's right. It seems like we could... Yeah, so also like when we get good at this, we'll, we'll run this through FEA because now the, the FreeCAD model allows us to do that. So the finite element analysis, we can analyze the structural loads on this and that's actually we can show that once we do that we can show hey engineer we can do this and they probably use that they probably yeah, they probably, probably what they do yeah and we can do that right in FreeCAD so we say hey we'll do the work for you we don't have to sweat it so much engineer <laughs> we got it in FreeCAD and you know we can refine these models and yeah so once again this is digital digital models then you get everything out of this model once you have the complete model all right so Let's go to the CAD and then I would want the file to be uploaded over the last one. So is that still there? Yeah, so which one I wanna do I wanna download? So that's already positionally correct. Um yeah, we could do that so that right now as we build on... Okay, let's examine what this means. So, so this is one of these exercises where we're still refining the workflow. Of how do you do this when you work on an assembly? Um, it actually... There's two ways to do it. You can work on a file when it's like at the origin or in positionally correct. So if we're working in a positionally correct location, we're going to be far from the origin probably in some places. So in some places, it's not going to be convenient for us to be moving stuff. We have to pay attention to what height we are at. Uh, but let's try it if it's trackable. So let's quickly like assess okay, what do we got here. Can we can we actually put the blocks into the final file? Maybe we decide that we that's really too hard. Uh, so let's see. You have two and a half minutes. Yeah, okay, so we got to do that. Um, so
So what do we think? What do you think, Wes? Should we be working here or go back? I mean, this isn't the roof. But oh. Okay. Uh, am I at the? Okay. Let's. Sorry. Download yours. Okay. I'm not first. Sure if there's a, I mean, I put the. I put the roof file right there on the, in the roof section, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure we should have used that roof. And there, apparently, there are two roof sections. Oh wait, What's no, that? No, that's right. That's right. I wasn't sure if there was a sweet home that like, we should be using. Though. There's some like outdated files. No, we got to clean it all up. But I think the FreeCAD is some of the latest, um, typically the latest. Um, so let's take a look at the second story roof. So if I try to put in the first block, let, let's see how easy it is. So this is still in the XY plane. I would ex expect the, the origin to be right there. Uh, so let's see what happens when I go into the XY plane. I could put in the blocking looking from the top knowing that it's 11.25 tall and it could be whatever long. Let's make it like three inches so it's just enough to locate your members. Um, let's try this. So yeah, the origin should be there because we're our whole file is at the origin as we said at XYZ right there. So that's good. So it's going to be pretty easy to get these blocks in, but probably what's going to happen. So if I draw this right now here, okay, let's say that's my approximate block and I go 11.25, it should not work. It should be like way down, no? Or is it? So wait, so this is not positionally correct then. Okay, so that's good. So it's easy to put these in when we do the blocks. Uh, I guess you reverse the direction, right? So we have to remember to reverse the direction. So we're on the ground. We're still on the ground. So this is not positionally correct. It's convenient to actually put everything in. That's how we should probably do it because it's going to be easy to draw these. Okay, let's. Hey, I'll I, do that over lunch, but let's re rejoin. I, uh, <coughs> I posted a Zoom login for a premium account into the Discord channel, so you can use that to schedule indefinitely. because there is an audio issue? Not enough. I don't think it would get you any more than like 12 people. Well, I know that Zoom gets you dozens. So, I think it's better. What are the amount of people in Jitsi ever? Sometimes well, not right now, but we will when, say, Summer X comes about. So we might as well use what what can scale a little larger. Yeah. I think it was a hosting issue. If we had self hosted Jitsi, I think um, maybe it would have been better. Yeah, we can consider that. Uh, yeah, when we can do it, it's probably local hosting could work. Yeah. Let's see. So.
Um, so are people in the other meeting now? I just created it. I'm not, it says uh, not the right password. There shouldn't be a password. So the, the last message in the apprenticeship is for it. Is the link. Just the link? Yeah. Okay. And once you join March, you'll make that. Yeah, I see Marsh and Chris. Let's do the continue. So the exercise. Let's see. Um, screen sharing. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So once again, uh, putting in the blocking. So now we have every every um, the use. I guess the just to show the usefulness of this exercise. Here we're building this within FreeCAD, but you have to think about how you're actually going to build it in order to get this right. So, for example, where would I, if I just look at this from the from the get-go, um, well, you go up on the roof there, we're on the, now we're, where are we at right now? We're on, let's see, at this phase, if this is the roof, what's happening there? We're probably on ladders on the second story platform and We've got all the joists on the second story platform. We brought them up there. Now this is tall already, like the second story walls are already there. We gotta put this on the second story walls. So we set up ladders and we put up joist by joist on that. Now all the walls have to be stabilized. They're all screwed down. Uh, there's, they're uh, bolted to each other. Uh, so if you push out, you have to watch out for pushing the walls out because they don't, well, they have, a, okay, at this point they have a top plate. So you should not be able to push the walls out. They'll be rather stable. So when we're inside the second story without a roof and we're starting to put on a roof, we go from the inside and one by one we start. So we probably might want to start with the this one here or this one here say uh, and actually people can work you know if you examine the the workflow here uh, you can actually have people start from both sides so you've got a team of, of two or four people here which is completely independent from this one here and here so you can do them at the same time if you have more people you can actually do just about all the corners at the same time we pre-cut these all these ones to the right length which are these are going to be exactly 16 but these are going to be less um, so the workflow here could be like if we have enough people bam just this goes up on the same time how do you locate the corner well you just got to remember this pattern you know, make sure that you don't do the overlap the other way that's that's there but you can locate it because how do you locate it? it's at the edge you already have the walls 
and top plate below that's locating that corner. But what about this one? Um, it's not located yet. So where do you put the block, the locating block? So we're here. Where do we put it? So we go to. No, wrong one. All right, so these are simple copies here already. Uh, what about the file before this? We would like to have the file before this. I'm looking at this. We downloaded the, the clones. Do we have the source that's got more than that? We should have the one before that so that if there were any mistakes in this, we can edit them. Um, the only mistake I think will be uh, at the right end, the right side. Uh, the last, the last Joy Seventeen is I don't think exactly twenty four inches. Yeah. I mean, okay. I don't know. And this hasn't been corrected or uploaded yet because that's still at the seven point six. So, uh, upload if you have it. Do you have the old file the with the sketches? Uh, upload that. All the sketches. I just created a single sketch and then it's all. Oh, problems. you did a single sketch. Uh, how? You yeah. couldn't have because you got all the parts atomically. I you got all the individual parts. Oh, you cloned that? Oh, I see. That's what you did. Oh, okay. So you didn't do the sketches for everything. Which okay. Um, so right now here. There's the one way to do it is I go into part design and let's fix that issue first. So we're looking at this file. Um, we want to close this down a little bit. So I'm going to measure. I'll do a sketch below that. First of all, I'm going to do a sketch that's that's. I can go from any side. So I'm going to do me a sketch that's say from the origin over to. Well, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna zoom in towards the origin. So this side here, we want to be five, uh, six point two five. In other words, three quarters inch off. So five point five. Not five point five, six point two five. So that marks our location. So we're going there. That's where the joist, yeah, it's exactly one and a half inches off. So um, I can take this one and go into your draft and move it over. So how do you do it? Make sure you got the view, then take that. And I'm going to take the corner and move it exactly to this corner, and that's going to be exactly where we need it. So there you go, we fix that. Now, this block here that I did, where does that go? Where's going to be our first locator? So I'm going to, I can get rid of this sketch here. So this one here, <coughs> sketch underneath it, where's that go? Where'd I put it? And let's make it accurate in size. So first of all, that side is what? It's 1.5. And second, what is this one? What do we say that was going to be? What's convenient and logical? You want to use considerations. Minimal material use that does the purpose. So let's have let's have guess let's go down a row here. What would you would you make it? Two considerations. So you're designing this thing. You know the function it has. The function is to locate your joists. You got a function that's defined. You want it to be easy to make. It does the purpose. Let's just say easy to make. 
I would call it it's it's equal to the size of the the joist, which is 11.25. So we can cut it from two by twelves. So you just go on a saw and cut a slit sliver for this thing. But my question is, what is the green? What's that length? So Odunda, what would you make it? Three inches. Three inches. Wes, what would you make it? Maybe either like one inch or four inches. One or four? It's kind of hard. It's kind of arbitrary. If you're trying to save material, one inch doesn't think it just be one inch. If you're trying to make it be uniform with the other joists. Okay, so let's explore that. You say one inch. So there's a, I think there's a trade-off between material use and uniformity with all, all the parts. One inch would be nice, but what's an issue with one inch? What do you think? You guys have experience with some of this. It's hard to cut. Yeah. Hard to cut. Not hard to cut because oh. you can cut it off a long board yeah, of, a, of a two by twelve. Okay. You can cut one inch. When I'm placing it, I mean, I'm gonna, it's not just gonna stay in place um, if I wiggle it too much. You, you know what I mean? No. Uh, <laughs> You're using a square. You're using a speed square. Okay. You're gonna get it straight vertically up. So when you screw well, it in, it'll just you know, start. Fragmented. Yeah. It's gonna split. One inch is gonna split. Uh, you have experience with. Uh, you can see how those little pieces start splitting. More than one inch. I would say more than two inches. I would start at three. Two inches, I could still see that splitting. Three is like okay, that's good. Possibly even four, but three minimum. Because the feet on like the feet on the uh, on the other door modules, yeah. like the hidden ones, those are. Uh, They're splitting too. They were and they were, um, those were two. Or? Those were like six inches, but we were putting a lot of screws into them. Right. Now this is two by twelve, and it's this way. The grain is this way, so it's a long sliver like that. Yeah, like three or four, I would say. Uh, three or four. So, and why'd you say three Odundo? Um, well, I was thinking of actually when you're putting the joist in place. Mm. Um, you don't want to miss it? Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. If it's one inch, you might miss it. You might hit against it. You might just skip it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. Um, so I'd say three. What about, Paul, what would you make it based on discussion? Does that make sense? Or what, would you do something different? Uh, yeah, I think I still don't understand. This is being cut from a two by 12. Yeah, it could be enough so that when you put it in, your your joist will not be twisting. If it's if it's 11.25 and you put this in straight, then no way can your joist twist be like twisted. If it's too short, like cut out of a two by four. Well, actually, a two by four is actually quite convenient because you because we don't need to waste two by twelves. It's, it's like three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. Yeah. That's perfect. That would be my Okay, that's actually better because then we're not wasting two by twelves. Two by twelves are pretty expensive, yeah. and we have cutoffs of two by fours. Justin Prince. also in the chat had, had a guess or a, yeah, a suggestion. What's that? He says uh, if the grain is perpendicular to the cut, a warp it could warp badly and also be split by screws. <coughs> For if um, if the grain is perpendicular to the cut, well, we have a long two by four, so cutting against the grain that's what it's designed for. So I think that would be good. In a two by twelve, you're you're drilling into the grain, like lengthwise into the grain, which is the weaker the weaker direction. So yeah, actually two by four makes makes more sense. Prince, would you suggest anything different, or just go with the flow? <laughs> or do you, <laughs> yeah, I think two by four is actually so. Yeah, two by four would be the easiest because we have cutoffs of two by fours, so that would be a good thing to use up. Okay, so we're gonna make this three point five. Now we couldn't do that before in the blocking because we needed four before, so we could not use a two by four nor other dimensional lengthwise because there is no nothing that's four inches. We have to cut off four inches, and we there we said. Of 
we cut that out two by sixes actually right yeah which is decent enough you've got half half of the space covered so you don't warp you don't uh, like twist your uh, joists side to side you, you want to use a straight edge the the speed square to mark a line straight up and down and then you're blocking like for the second story platform make sure your joists are straight up and down here I guess um, yeah we could do like a 10 inch piece or up to 11.25 so it's not sticking up or down but like 10 inch let's just say 10 inch pieces um, okay so 3.5 here now where'd I put this thing here here where am I putting it is that a good place to put it or do we want to put it on the other side or do we want it here which one we're locating these these joists. I mean, we messed up when we built them because it's kind of arbitrary. Uh, if you're if you're going actually no no we can explain that we actually didn't we just said that we we're gonna build them from the thin from the middle out. Okay. okay, but what's the consideration? Where do you put this blocking? How are we gonna be building this? That that is the consideration. Of how you uh, like if you're doing it. From so what direction are we gonna be moving this in from? So. This is the beginning of the house, so we're going to be from right to left in the, in this is my Okay, so we're looking at the top, if you look at my screen. Um, so this one, where is that one going to be? It's like, it's going to be in the middle of the house. It's going to be laying in a pile here, so we're going to be moving it to the left, right? Right, so, from, yeah, left to the left. To the left, so where's this blocking? On the right. Well, right now, but if you wanted to if you, have it easier, easier it's here, right? Left. Yeah, you put it behind it, so you put it against it. You don't put it like behind it and then towards you. It's just ergonomics. So put it there. That's it. Okay, next one. Let's do the next one. So I'll I'll upload this. Now let's see how does that look from. Okay, so we didn't. Oh, I see. So I did. Uh, oh wait, you got. I'm seeing like you got two by sixes. We need two by twelves here. I'm I'm seeing two oh, by. Oh what? Wow, really? Yeah, we do. On all of it. I'm ready to start. Cause that's the problem. Yeah, I missed that one. This sucks, Harris. Yeah, like two by sixes. You cannot do that kind of a long span with two by sixes. You need two by twelves. Huh? Okay, well I'm not in charge of your money. Uh, yeah, somebody. I got four gallons of gas. Where's Jeff? I don't see him. Where's he? Uh, he's gone. I think 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 all right so, um, yeah so first thing is uh, that yeah that needs to be two by twelves just like this the second story platform yeah and you can kind of see this this is kind of getting thin right you can kind of see it but not from the top. From the top, it looks good. We're not seeing the screen. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think I, this, uh, this is why I wish I had links. That's the one thing why I wish I had free cam 19. Yeah. Then you could update all of them in a couple of seconds. Yeah. Um, you can, yeah. Yeah, you probably want to, that would be easier. And um, so for this thing, how long did I pad this thing out? 11.25, and that's what it kind of showed me. We can make it like 10 inches, so it's um, a 
what would be acceptable is you can do it in FreeCAD 19, but save it as the dumb object uh, once we know it's correct, though. Yeah. Yeah. And then the dumb object saved, typically that will get you into FreeCAD 16, as long as it's got just the dumb object. Um, so yeah, okay, we need the second story platform. Okay, so just just for the exercise, let's have uh, Odundo, let's do the next block, and where would you put it? So we're working down the house. S say you're the team that's working on this other corner, the opposite corner, where are you going to put the block there? So let's go to the opposite corner. Uh, let me just uh, save and upload. Even though that's uh, not exactly the right file. Um, needs to fix. Added first block blocking. All right, so we can download it. You can just pull that up from recent YouTube changes, right? You should be. It's not showing up. Go to click upload log, and then it does show up there under recent wiki changes. You see it? So recent wiki changes, 19 July, upload log. And the first file in upload log is the second story roof. You get it? Um, Show your screen. Okay, I'll try it now. Uh, what's going on there? So refresh, Control R. Oh wow, you getting 17 July? Upload log. Maybe in Germany it's still 17 July. Uh, how are you getting this caching issue? Can you? What's the trick against that? Because. Well, the trick there was the incognito window. Yeah, okay, I'll try that. Still 17, how is that happening there? Um, Maybe no one's uploaded anything today. I just did, and it's in my wiki changes. Okay, so what do people see if you go to recent wiki changes? Do you see I my... I can get it now. Uh, I went to... Uh, I clicked on Gallery of New Files. And then go down... Mm. Second Story Roof. Yeah. Uh, so do the blocking in the upper right-hand corner. So where would you put it? Yeah, maybe uh, start and st stop free cut. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's frozen. All right, next person, let's have uh, Prince, why don't you go, go and put in a block in the upper right hand corner? So 
let's discuss this. So given that the workflow, we have a pile of these rafters on a second story floor. We, we bring them up there probably through the stairway because that's you, you're not going to put them a, above the second story walls. You're going to carry them up or uh, there might be a ladder. We might have the stairs already there. Um, we probably may not have the stairs yet uh, because that requires interior sheathing on the on the house which we won't have so we'll probably have a ladder going up there like a temporary ladder we're putting the joists up there on a the second floor so we're gonna take them to each side so one team works on one side work one another works on the other so uh, so now you got a second st okay go back to the second story roof though and the other file you got second story floor. So we'll take you to the upper right hand corner. That means So download go go and download the other file. Mm -hmm. Are you freezing up or? No, there it is. Not that one. That go Go back to the wiki. Oh, that's okay. Recent changes. Okay, there you go. Um, Good power design. So upright. So the wood is going to be in the center of the pile in the center. Now we're going to work the upper right corner. So you're going to take the wood from the left to the right. And based on that, where's the blocking going to be? And I still notice that the, the joist there is in the wrong position. But don't worry about that for now. Because it should be the 6.25. Okay, so you're going to put one. What plane are you going to put that in, put your blocking into? Still on the uh, XY. XY. So, so do a sketch. New sketch. So we're putting in block by block, starting with a sketch. You can also just move, if you want, you can also move the, the block, which is easier for you. Yeah, I was going to copy that. Copy and move it, yeah. Um, yeah take that one since it's already there. What? I thought, are you sure it's 6.5 from outside to outside? Because it's 5.5. Yeah. So now we're going out with it three quarters of an inch so that you have enough space to screw in your ceiling. Um, I thought I had the joist position correctly, 6.25 6 from zero. Well, but 6.25 well, to the, the outer plate, edge. The plate is 5.5, um, and we want it half hanging off the plate. Yeah. So normally you would off offset it um, uh, 4 inches, right? But normally it's for offset 4. Now it's going to be 4.75 or 6.25 if you measure to the outside. Yep. Okay, so Prince, that's right. You you have it in the right position, so when you move it in, it, oh yeah, and then accept it went the other way, so reverse it. Um, or, well, you gotta mo then move it. Yeah, it's uh, when you copied the first one, yeah, I guess you can go through the properties and change the Z, Z position of it. Mm -hmm. Or, um, close out of that one and click on the actual part, the part there. Yeah, that one and placement, that will be Z, Z position, negative 10, make it what? Zero? 
zero. Yeah, that's it. There. Okay, next person do it. Do the next one. Where's the next block gonna go? Let's continue going down. Let's do the these end ones first. So what that means, we're gonna be moving in two directions. The blocking is towards one side on one side, towards the other on the other. And that's what we actually did already for the second story platform. We're actually good there because we'll work from the center and move on out because that's the physical reality of the situation. Yeah. Uh, next person do that, maybe Joshua or whoever. Download, so upload the file and download and put in the next block. Now we can actually save the blocks. Um, they're not for nothing because they're positionally correct. So after Wes updates his file, they can insert into his file. So Wes, you can actually be working on a 2x12 version right now. <laughs> I think one of the joists are on the right side are incorrect in the right incorrect exposition, but I'm not sure which one is so if anyone notices that while it's locking. It's an Easter egg. That was pretty good enough, like the whole whole thing turned out. Who's doing this one right now? So I, I just added the joist that was sharing my screen, so I was going to upload it. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, we're doing the alignment joist, right? Like just the first one, and then the second one comes on after the joist is already in, and you screw it together. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, just I'll, go I'll down. Really go down a row. Wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay.
Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And then how far are we going to go? We're going to go to the midpoint and then just continue repeating the pattern to the midpoint and then we have to decide, well, whoever's doing that CAD will decide, okay, the midpoint gets which side, the, the right or left, it doesn't matter so much. Um, you can compose these out of like, a, a, I mean, I think it'd be nice to compose like this roof out of a, a bunch of parts that include both the joist and the blocking in the part. And I mean, if, uh, we can't do this with 16, but with 19, basically we could create a bunch of parts that contain both the blocking and, and the mm -hmm. joist and then create links of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, so that looks good. Um, okay, so we kind of went through most people. Um, excellent. So that's usable. We have to correct that to the 12. So let's actually look at, let's break down the tasks into what's outstanding for right now for the full file. And let's see if we can um, allocate that to work on it like right now. And in the workshop, what we want to do, like the, just to so you you can wrap your head around it, we went through the house wrap and the exterior panels for the regular, for most of the regular modules. We can continue that. There's a bunch of modules that we can do that way. There are not windows or doors. For windows or doors, there's a specific. Well, you got to do the cutout for the windows, obviously, and that. But because we don't want to throw out the, like half a sheet when we cut out a window we can do s strips so like the the thin sides on the side are a strip and the top and bottom are strips so we're using like mostly like a hundred percent of the material as opposed to like wasting fifty percent for those panels so but for now we can continue on many of the ones that are the same both the eight footers and nine footers um, uh, maybe what we do we'll do one we did a nine footer I think starting to get your head around that one. The eight footer, pretty much the same, same kind of pattern, except um, let's see how long were, were we hanging the plywood down? Down enough so we don't slip off the top, um, what do you call it, the top plate. If you move, <coughs> so on the second story modules, which are eight feet, they all have top blocking, right? So we can't slip the plywood down so it go falls off the top plate on an eight foot module. So we can only move it like, say, three quarter inches down. That's probably what we should do. So we can still screw it in at the top and be uniform everywhere. So, so if you leave three quarters an inch, yeah, you're good. And then we have a little bit of a lip so that when we put the modules on the house, use that as a lip to align against the outer outer rim of the second story platform. Does that make sense? So we have a locating lip on the bottom. It's also a drip edge so that water doesn't get under the panel. Uh, so we can do three quarter. Before we did the 1.1 1. 1. 1 inch on a, on the bottom modules. So for the second, so we'll go through, let's go through one like that and then we can just think about, okay, what are all the details I need to crank these out? Because we just got to crank them out as soon as we got them all. And prepared wood, like the prepared wood with the blockings for the roof. We can go up there and install. So this is a few days away. So we're getting ready to build this thing, finally. Um, so think about, okay, let's let's crank out all the 
the regular panels. Probably tomorrow, let's do the windows, windows and doors, which are more complicated. We'll go through that in detail. There's more complexity there, just because of the flashing details and things like that. Um, so for now, in a in a what's remaining of the time in the morning, let's divide up the remaining tasks. So what do we have? I've been working on this subfloor with the plywood to fit in the gap. That sounds good to me. So let's let's on the first page. Let's allocate so roles breakdown. So CAD completion breakdown. And let's ask the remote people too. Okay, so, so Paul. Second story platform plywood. <coughs> so you see that there's four, six, and eight foot pieces, right? Yeah, I was gonna ask how big the panels were. I assume they were four by eight. Four by eight, exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're the tables that we can use, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. Same thing. And the verification point is they all have to end up on the middle of a joist. That's how they're going to get attached. So that's like the verification point. Now you also have that thin strip at the bottom, at, at the right side, or at one side of the the stairway. There's that strip that needs to be covered too. But we have the file, the the file that we have, the second story floor platform file. That one has already got like the first row already in there. So maybe borrow that. Okay. Um, maybe copy from one to the other. So I can show what I have so far. Yeah. Screen share, but mm -hmm. also look at the second floor one. Yeah. And here you probably want to start by locating against the first, second floor locator sketches that are when we're doing a, the CAD master file, there's the sketch. So that if you're at zero, zero, like when you put this into your final model, uh, it'll actually be positionally correct. But uh, you can work it on the first floor or on the second floor already. Well, okay, so we have that. So this is the master file. Yeah. I see. Um, so I can uh, use the joists in the wall modules here to make sure that the panels are on, like mm -hmm. uh, overlap with them. And then you're saying on the stairs. Yeah, there's that strip strip on the north side there. The strip on the it's actually the west side. So, this one here? North. north. Sorry, Sorry, I mean. <laughs> yeah, go up. So there's that long strip that's under the 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 wall panels. <laughs> that one's a, an adjustment much. There's that strip there. So if you click on one of those panels, you'll expose the, the strip. Now you see that joist there. That needs to be corrected, right? We talked about that one. That one's sticking out one and a half inches. It needs to be punched in to the wall because that needs to be a smooth, smooth wall going straight up from top to bottom okay. so that one is wrong now so we do have the file if you go back to sh2cad there is this file at the at the sketch level so you can correct it easily there you can go back in it if you go to sh2cad do I have to download it? I don't think I have yeah, you go to the CAD page and the seed home V2 CAD page. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> keep going down, down, down. It's uh, it's way beyond. So it's after the it's after the individual modules. Um, where is that? Up maybe. Up a little bit. Up. Up maybe up. Still, yeah, that one there, second story platform. That one's gonna have the sketches behind it, so you can work from it. I don't think it's positionally correct there, so you have to move it in at the end. Okay, so how do we divide? Like maybe one person do the platform. There's sheathing. We need all the blocking wants to do all the blocking for the second story platform. I can do it. Okay. 
so put your name to that one so second story platform plywood for Paul and then blocking and so how big is that blocking in terms of its how far it sticks away from the wall that was the four inch so it's different than the roof now yeah. you got to go back to the detail yeah you know where to find that detail um, not exactly. sh2 cad page SH to CAD in the index, you'll find it. Um, so, Seed Home 2 part library, there's this select details 2.6. It's the first floor ceiling detail. That's, that's the blocking there now. Uh, but that was 4 inches because that means the face blocking will end up even with the interior wall. The interior wall has to match up where you do the blocking stuff. So the blocking is ends up four inches. Okay. You remember that detail? Mm -hmm. Don't take a look at that file and study that. So um, second story platform blocking. Next, that's important for structure. So roof. So Wes is doing that. Let's do the roof blocking. Somebody take that roof blocking for Prince? Yeah. Okay. Who wants to do the 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 four inch rise, which means the two by fours plus the half inch plywood. What we showed from the side profile. Um, let me share my screen here. That's what we were looking at earlier. Yeah, it was the earlier. That was the the blocking detail. No, no, not um, no, not that one. The, the side view thing, which was called. It's called roof detail. This one, it's called the roof detail. Once again, it's on an SH2 CAD page uh, under the select details. It's the the last one there, the roof detail. <coughs> uh, but yeah, that's so you're talking. That's and another person has to do the top plate. Um, let's see how we're div divvying it up. There's top plate which goes all around. That's okay. Let's save that for somebody else. You do the one, this one, and that one. You see it? Yeah. Make them separate parts. So, how many of the parts of this half inch plywood? We're going to cut that out of half inch plywood. So, you're going to have four strips of that because it comes in eight foot. For this one, you probably do. You might have some 16s. We do have at least one, but yeah, you can draw those out in 16s. So call them two these, of them. These basically go. These are basically going to be formed into the rectangle around. Like the, just the one side, but just one side because it's oh, slant. Oh, riser, right? It's just the riser. Okay. The half inch does exists only on the back wall, which is the west wall. Okay. So this thing, like here, it slopes down to the front of the house. Yeah. I get it now because you, yeah. you have the you have the half inch to make it act exactly four because of the yeah. two by four being a little bit shorter. Yeah. Okay. I, I get it. Yeah. Now, so don't worry about the top plate. We need so top plate. Somebody else who's going to do the top plate. Remote people. Someone remote. Because we, we ran out of people here. Yes. That's that's the long side. One long. Side. All of them. Top plate goes everywhere. You got to bond all the all the top story modules. Not for the top plate, for the riser. The riser is just the west side, just the one long side. Okay. Yeah. The back of the house. So 
So who's gonna who wants to take something from remote? Justin said he'll do it in the chat. Did you hear that, Mark? Justin said that he'll do it in the chat. Okay. I'm still, still feeling a little confused on all this, so I'm reluctant to yep. volunteer. Other, if someone wanted to like work together with me or something, I'd welcome that. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Top plate for Justin. What else? So um. Yeah. Now the where's Ken? Did he um, uh, went somewhere? Are there two people remote that can work? Because after, if you look at, um, so I'm gonna share my screen. We have more roof, roofing stuff there before we close it off with the with the rubber roofing. And what's it look like? That looks like. Uh, slide number 14. Let's bring that up a little bit. In slide number 14, we've got more. We've got the insulation box, which is above the roof joists. So that's just plain, plain uh, two by fours. Once again, with the half inch, because the insulation is two inches plus two inches, so it needs to be four inch. There's two. The rigid insulation has to be two layers of two-inch thick insulation, um, and the reason for that is when you have that much insulation, you're going to avoid condensation on the underside of that insulation because the thermal gradient is you, it's got enough heat trapping that you never get that cold where the fiber insulation ends up. So this is actually like the industry standard for a flat roof. You got to have in this climate tempered zone you gotta have four inches of of rigid and then the fiber insulation underneath that the rigid is so you avoid condensation into the fiber because the roof is going to be cold you gotta keep the heat in for condensation to be avoided uh, so that's a functionality issue which obviously in a warmer climates you wouldn't have that much insulation and in colder climates I'm not sure how far north this goes. I think this goes to like at least, you know, like I think it might go to like North Dakota. It may not go to like colder, like Canada, like more Arctic. It may not do it, but we know it does. This works for the temperate zone within just about all the United States. What's the total R value for the roof? I think it's like 40, something like 40, like 10 plus 30. So the rigid insulation, I think, is five and five. Or something, something like that might might be off a little bit. It's like around 40 total. Um, but we got two inches of the EPS extended polystyrene steel insulation times two, plus the 12 inches of the the fiber insulation. Yep. Um, are we still using the build cheat sheet Google Doc for tracking goal allocation? Uh, the the spreadsheet that we did, I think it's probably the best place to keep keep tracking at it because that's one place one placeholder that we can put everything in there. Uh, so not the Google Doc, but the Google spreadsheet, more like. Uh, let's see. Is there anyone else on the remote side that you can work with? Well, I can work with you a little bit here. So so Matt. Um, it's a box that's kind of like what Joshua is doing except it's all around and it's on top the roof joists now you don't need to make it positionally correct so all you gotta do is draw this thing to be once again the 16 by 32 outer dimension and make the parts separate so make separate between there's your half inch plywood that's this half inch spacer and then the 2 by 4 which is 3.5 inches so it adds up to 4 inches so I think for you if you work at the 0 0 0 origin XY plane that's all you need to do uh, that's, uh, and then we can move it into place then we, then we talk about making this into simple objects dumb objects and putting them all together so we, we rotate everything all at once at the very end 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do the installation box, and then if anyone else is watching this video, the rigid insulation goes on top of that. So we have to fit that within the insulation box, which means that it's not 16 by 32 feet. It's going to be 16 feet minus 3 inches and 32 feet minus 3 inches. So we'll leave as many of the insulation pieces intact and cut the ones on the, on the edges. Um, now their pattern has to be such that we want to stagger the, the insulation so no seams line up. That's the precondition there. So it's like a, a Tetris thing. Uh, in the picture here we have so if you look at that picture there and you can extract this from the let's see uh, do we have the actual what's file has this so this is taken from the the, the sweet home um, the explanation here for further on after the insulation box is that the first sheet of insulation is cut in half, second one is whole, 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 so that the seams wouldn't add up, wouldn't, uh, wait, what's going on there? You want to do it, I, I don't think this is, uh, these seams here, for example, are lining up. That's okay as long as the next row is going to cover these seams, so stagger it so that the next row never ends up on the same seam. And that's just like a little Tetris work there. So here you've got um, this insulation like this. We can repeat this pattern and then put in more insulation. That's kind of like detail. Like when we actually build it, we do want to pay attention to it. So we actually do want to cut it up so that the pattern is exact. It's not like, uh, do we cut this into two feet or four feet? No, you got to cut some so no, none of the seams line up. If they line up, you've got cold breaks, cold bridges. Um, where air can get in so when we do the actual CAD you want to design it so no seams overlap um, that means for example like if this is the rigid insulation here you would make the next layer as like this here we would overlap this one like this so all the seams were covered right there you see that and then we would do this one here like that so all those seams are covered there and then I guess the next one would be well we might have to cut a thin one here because that looks like four feet here if we did this the next one here has to be cut like this in half so that you're not overlapping those seams does that make sense and then we can go back to actually this full one does that make sense but nobody's doing it right now but for whoever takes a look at this that's that's what we need to do so now it's a back to a full sheet again here and the pattern is just that no seams overlap that's all and that we want to draw up carefully in CAD so when we actually do this we follow the CAD blueprint to show the overlap otherwise we'd be like oh which which one is which and we're in a field there we'll mess that up unless we have a clear blueprint to work from so that's rigid insulation and then OSB is one layer and for that uh, the pattern like we have there that that should be should be pretty much fine uh, you, you definitely want to try to minimize your seam overlap as well but yeah maybe maybe actually maybe this is not good here what maybe maybe we have to do because then if you look at the OSB on the top top row you also want to try to minimize seam overlap there too for cold bridges so you'd probably want to overlap like this here over the middle um, more like
Well, somewhere your seams are going to overlap, so it's, you kind of have to scratch your head a little bit. What's the best way to overlap so that we are, we're all good? This doesn't come into play so much, this question of how do you overlap it on a second story platform, because um, that pattern we can actually look at from the... Yeah, Paul, like when you're doing that, the Sweet Home file has a pattern that works already. Are you looking at that by any chance? Um, and that file was, the where is that one? That should have it in there. Okay. That should have the pattern. Right, so the technical actually should have these patterns. Uh, so Katrina worked on that before. I think that might be all. If we just follow her, that's that's probably a good start, if not, if not, if it's not good altogether. Yeah, I guess she's got that on. Yeah, she's that's in the detail. So basically, oh, let, let me look at the actual CAD file there. So we're not redoing that work. The sweet home. Arshan, what's the R value of the walls? Uh, I think it's like 21. So whatever 6 inch insulation is, the standard 2 by 6 insulation that's um, from the store. I think that this might not be enough like this for like upstate New York where I am. Not sure about that. Um, I have to, I would need uh, R value of 25 to by an R20 in the wall cavities plus R5 for the continuous insulation on the exterior wall. And then if we if I do that, and, uh, the roof would need to be R49. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's look at our bill of materials, what, what the actual numbers are there. You need 49 there? Mm-hmm. 49 on the roof if I have 25 on the wall. Sorry, what's the roof requirement? 49 if the walls are 25. If the walls are as low as 23, then I would need an R60 in the wall. Or in the, in the roof. Mm-hmm. Look at the insulation. Let's 
so there's 38 for So we got 16 plus, this is what we do twice, so this is uh, 2 inch. So we got 16 plus 38, so we got 56 for the roof. And then um, for the walls, it looks like we've got 19. If, uh, if the requirement is whatever you got in your place, then you'd need to go to instead of like two by sixes and two by eights or or something like that or or do the same as we do and build out the walls by however many more inches so that you're either expanding your foundation to keep the interior the same um, or keeping the exterior the same and, and making your walls a little fatter towards the inside so you have just a little bit of less space on the inside uh, so these are modifications that would have to be made. Okay. You said you need 25? 25 or 21 and then the roof would have to be six. Mm-hmm. So maybe expand your walls to 25, which you can obtain from, um, say, one and a half inch. That's R6. 6 oh, plus 19. R23 in the wall. 23. So you could do one inch, extra one inch. You can put one of these on, on your inside and then do the uh, interior plywood, something like that, or put this, let's see, where would you put that, exterior, yeah, either interior or exterior, you'd have to add one of these, one inch, one inch insulation like this, which is not, not particularly a large change, you'd have to, but you might have to go to, say, from two by six to yeah, there's different ways to do it. You either add another layer of this or just frame it out larger with larger instead of 2x6, two 2x8s. By two by Something like that. Are we worried about um, with the modular construction? Is there like more of a thermal bridging issue with the, the more amount of like kind of frame sort of? With what? Like thermal bridging where like uh, being exchanged through the direct course, and so if you have like the two modules next to each other, uh, you know, you essentially have various uh, more lumber next to each other through which heat might transfer. Because yeah, if you <clears throat> uh, if that's a concern, then you can do like a thing where you got two by fours and they're not connected. Yeah, there's different ways to go about that. You can. Consider, but yeah, there, there's a thermal bridge coming through your your lumber, indeed. So, 
Um, I haven't really thought about through the details of what that would entail, but what would that entail? Yeah, um, we have to just look at the codes. What basically, like, look at what's the standard of what how people build there. Like, what do they do? What's the standard practice? And that could probably get you most of the answer. And because we're still working at the 4x8 panel module level, the modification is relatively straightforward to, to retrofit that into our design. So we'll still, we'll still do it modularly like we do. just might have to change the thickness of the wall a little bit. If we wanted to use the CMBs, would that be a completely different build? Uh, different build technique. <laughs> yeah, like that. For that, my question is still okay. What do you do? Because it's got thermal mass, but not the R value. So you have to do this foam insulation like this, or something, or two layers with with insulation between the two walls. Like say, say do uh, blown cellulose, which we've done in one of these houses here. So there's different ways to go about that. Right. Yeah, but that's yeah. a completely different detail, and we want to work that out for next year. Like I think that's going to be, yeah, definitely like not right now, but for next year we want to work that out. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you think you have enough to go on to to do the insulation box on top, which you can put at the origin, so you're not we're not it's not positionally correct yet. We can do all of that. Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on it now. Yeah. Excellent. And so you want to split these in, uh, by four feet, like the, the length of the top of the paddle versus the height of the plywood, eight feet. Okay. Just so basically, join two panels together with the plywood, and then you have the rise around. Yeah, two at a time with. Uh, so you're. We can assume that your long pieces are 16s. Okay. Uh, I know we have some 16s there, and we bought them for that purpose. So we're handling like one instead of two. It just can go a little faster if you get a longer one. But then again, longer longer ones are kind of like unman less manageable. If you're I think they're still faster. The yeah, we'll be standing on a second floor when we're doing this. Okay. Um, yeah, so ladders on a second floor. Mm hmm. Okay. So I'll make them eight feet then. Just eight. Uh, or, uh, yeah, eight feet up until we get to the 192. For that one side of the, the west side of the wall. For the roof. Yeah. 